the word of God is the means by which people are healed. The word of God is sent his word and his word delivered them. Then Acts 10, 36 to 38 shows that it is Christ preached that heals the sick. Amen? Uh, John 10, so the last question becomes the first to be answered. John 10, 36. Eh, did I say John 10? Yes. Oh, that's beautiful. But uh, while others go to John 10, I'm going to Acts 10, 36 to 38. Acts 10, 36 to 38. Are we there? The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. What is said in the bracket there? He is Lord of all. Whenever God wants to do something, he opens the veil. And the word of God comes out. Amen? Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. It's not the letter of the word, but the spirit of the word. It just makes known to us who Christ is. And God is committed to confirming that word. So it does not only heal our bodies, he heals every area of our being by his word. His word is the deliverer today. Amen? Amen. He sent his word, and his word healed them and delivered them from all their troubles. And of course, the presence of the word stirs up faith. And then people are able to receive. Amen? Amen. But we continue to 38, verse 37. That word I say, Ye know, which was published throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. Let's read verse 38. What is that word? Want to go? How God anointed Jesus Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that we are oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. So there is packed so much about Christ delivering men and women, delivering people from the affliction and tyranny of sickness and of Satan. Amen? Amen. So, Going straight to your word without attempting to preach from here, I say, yes, the word of God heals today. Um, it is the, uh, it is in the presence of the word we know whether what is said to be healing is from God or some manipulations of the devil. Because it is in the presence of Christ revealed that God's spirit moved. There are spurious works all over the place in the name of healing. But if it does not reveal Christ, then it's not of him. You have the Logos and you have the Rema. One is a particularization of what the other has spoken. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to be tempted to go beyond that. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. So the word of God is a healer today. There is a mission and the word points to that mission. Healing is not an end in itself, but it means to an end. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. So we, we may have to come into this matter of the 24 elders and four living creatures. 
and their characteristics. Amen? Amen. <coughs> Ruth, are you okay? Uh, because you are not here. And uh, let us first of all see where uh, the, these steps are called. Did you read it out? Did, was there the reading of Revelation for today? Yes. Is, uh, yes? yes. Uh, okay, so you know where the, the term of four living creatures and 24 elders. Now, God's greatest possession is the church. The fullness of God's power is his church. It does nothing on the earth, but it does it through the church. The heavens, even the heavens are his, but the earth has it given to the children of men. And in executing anything on earth, it does so in partnership with man. Man as a collective body, man in this instance as the church of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. So, all through the ages, and we can uh, divide them into two, the Old Testament age and the New Testament age. God always advances his purpose on earth through a people in covenant with him. Bye. For example, if you are going to read of the four living creatures in the book of um, Ezekiel, you will find that Something is said of the living creatures in chapter 4, which is different from what you read in Ezekiel 1. I want to encourage you to go into this yourself, but let's go to Revelation chapter 4, and we'll find this said of the four living creatures. Okay, Revelation 4, verse 6. And before the throne, there was a sea of glass like unto crystal. And in the midst of the throne, and round about the throne, we are four living creatures, full of eyes before and behind. You will notice that I do not say four beasts because there can be nothing so far from these people as the beastly nature. The original say four living creatures. Okay. And the first beast, as it is here, well, how do we read it? And the first living creatures was like a lion. And the second was like a calf. And the third living creature had a face as a man. And the fourth living creature was a flying eagle. Let's read what next we find in the first part of verse 8, which is what I've come to pick here. What does it say? And the four living creatures had each of them six wings about them. Six wings. But when we come to Ezekiel chapter 1, let's go to Ezekiel. We read of these living creatures. I'll start reading from verse 4. 
and uh, we'll read until we get a comment as to the number of wings these living creatures had. And I looked, and behold, a white wind came out of the north, a great cloud, and, an, and a fire enfolding itself. And a brightness was about it, and out of the midst thereof, as the color of amber, out of the midst of the fire, also out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures. And this was the appearance. They had the likeness of a man. So these were human persons having characteristics symbolized by the things listed out which shows something of their life. Amen? Amen. We'll get a full understanding as we go on. Verse 6. And everyone had four faces. Everyone. Everyone. Notice that these details are not given like that in the New Testament. In the New Testament, you are four living creatures. One of them has the face of a man mm -hmm. finished with. Another has the face of uh, a, a calf finished with. Another the face of a man, and then of a flying eagles. But here, each one of the four living creatures had all four faces. But one face is dominant. Now, scriptures interpret scriptures. We are living creatures. And we are being developed in all four characteristics. We have the face of a man. And when shepherdic ministry is required, the, our heart is as the heart of God, full of love and compassion towards men. Glory! Amen. Hallelujah! Amen. But when it's just to labor and not to be tired, huh? the other characteristics are there. But it is the face of an ox. Tireless labor. But when there's necessity to establish the authority of God in a given place, there is the face of a lion. Fearless because he's absolutely confident in God. Hallelujah. The, the righteous is as bold as a lion. What is being called, uh, 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 is stressed there is the implicit confidence that the righteous has in God that does not make him to be harassed. Remember Joshua when he saw that man. As he went out to meditate on tactics for the deliverance of uh, um, Jericho. He was alone. He moved out of the camp to have quiet. And he saw that <laughs> man with a lifted sword. He was bold. Such a huge fellow. But he was bold. Because when you are of God, nothing can overcome you. Amen. And he has just heard a few days back, as I was with Moses, so I shall be with you. Amen. I will never leave you, nor forsake you. The, the first telling aspect of the quality of a living creature is implicit confidence in God. He knows that it's not a creature of chance. Your life cannot be messed up. You don't get messed up because you made a little mistake or some mistake. You are not in the realm of error and the law of cause and effect. That can affect the rest of the world. The glory of God will move you beyond your mistakes because you love him. 
it is not sin, then you die. For the law of the spirit of life Hallelujah. in Christ Jesus has set made me free. me free, set me free from the law of sin and death. death. Hallelujah. So my mistake notwithstanding, I have only one heart to do his will. Glory. And that heart has never seen and cannot see. In the name of Jesus. Glory. Amen. For I created after God in true righteousness and holiness. So if I make an error and I didn't submit my, my, my project on time and somebody says he wants to review me, it's a lie. What do I call it? A lie. If needs be, the rule will change because of me. You don't, you don't, well, he has put his faith in God. Does he say you should not do your work? No, you do your work. But when you make a mistake, you, maybe you didn't turn in your schedule well on time in the work, or while your, your MD is around, you said, um, happy Christmas, if you believe in Christmas, and your boss said, you should say happy holidays. Not happy, you are his religious by God. And he wants to punish you. He doesn't have the power Amen. to do it. Doesn't have the power. And not a creature of chance. Hallelujah. So such implicit confidence in, in God is what is called boldness. It, it is not anything but implicit confidence in God that makes you to be unshakable. And it's like a physical liar. He doesn't run away from battle. He, run to, he runs to it. Anyhow, then the face of a flying eagle, always in the heavens, like John. You, you see, in the beginning was the world, and the world was with God, and the world was God. He started his ministry from heaven <coughs> after that encounter. All things we are made by him, and without him, nothing made what that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And notice this. He took us to a beginning beyond what we read in Genesis 1.1. The beginning he speaks of is before Genesis 1.1. Amen. 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 It started from heavens and everything heaven, heavenly, heavenly. So these four natures are to be reproduced in each and every one of us. Amen. And that has begun. Yes. Amen. 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 Matthew, the gospel according to Matthew, sets him up forth as the Messiah, the king of the Jews. So when you read Matthew, you don't see anything indicating gradual growth of the Son of Man. But everything moves in the power of something that is already fully realized. So he set forth Christ as the King of the Jews. And the, the signal or the standard is the face of a lion. In Mark, we see the servant of God laboring and you find us moving from one thing then immediately after that another thing then immediately after that another thing when you read the book of Mark, you just see immediate more immediate 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 amen, amen. hallelujah tireless labor when you come to to luke the ancestry of jesus christ is twisted back to adam we ask in uh, Matthew is twisted to Abraham. He's the son of man, the face of a man. And the gospel of John set him as the flying uh, eagle. But all these natures are in us. The revealed word of God communicating wisdom to us is the eagle. Man being made more and more like God is like man the way God made him. So he's approachable. Eh? You don't see somebody who is like God and you fear, you fear to go near him. Eh? 
When God said, Thus hear the Lord, that you know, he's a man of God, but he's just up and coming. <laughs> he has a lot of journey to move. <laughs> because God made man in the in God made man in the image of God. The more you are like God, the more you are like man, the way God wanted man to be. So Jesus Christ was approachable. Everyone could reach him. Amen. Amen. Yeah, say, 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 you ask me, say, say, where are you, say, has fellowship? You are a youth. So, do you think that of all persons you can come and see me? Before you see me, go and see uh, Caris, see this person. Before you can now come and see me, know that the person is very far from the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. The face of a man. So all these natures are being developed in us. But notice the first part of the question I want to answer. Are these persons perfect? Are they overcomers? The question is no. They are not overcomers. Then what are they? They are they who have the spirit of the perfect one in them. Disposing them towards God in a way that is pleasing the sight of God. <coughs> and somebody will say, say it again, the grammar in that one is too much. All right. Not perfect, but having a disposition towards perfection. Amen. That's visible. Amen? Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Did you get that one? Yes. yes. Not yet perfect, but in the way of a perfection. Yes. You are allowing the Spirit of God to rule in your life. Amen. Amen. And because you are not perfect, but you are this, you you dispose yourself, your heart is towards him, we is perfect, you are complete in him. Christ is your completion at all times. Christ is your completion. Complete, complete, complete in him. We are complete amen. amen because we have received of his fullness and the, the reality within us is that this life is of such nature that as you keep exposing yourself to God and feeding it it will produce the fullness of the image and likeness of Christ amen amen Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, you notice that the extent of the knowledge of Ezekiel in the things of God was not full grown. He had only four wings. Wings are indicative of capacity to serve the Lord. So, wings in prophetic sim symbolism, where the context so admits points to ministry. For example, we read in Revelation chapter 12. Are we ready? Yes. So Revelation 12. Are we there? So let us read verse... 13 and 14. May I read? Yes. And when the dragon saw that he was cast out in, onto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child. It could better be read, he pursued after. There is no power with the, uh, with the dragon to persecute this woman. She's in the program of God. Had better the man child. She is not a Christian that she cannot be messed up. So the, the Greek word is dioko and does not emphasize persecution but pursue after as some of your translation read. Alright, but what we are going to see next is why we came to this passage to read. Verse 40. Are you there? Mm -hmm. 
And to the woman, we are given two wings of what? A great eagle. That she might fly into the wilderness, into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. The two wings of the great eagles are nothing but the, the, the ministry of the man child. So wings, where the context so allows, speaks of ministry. The Bible says God delivered the children of Israel from Egypt and brought them on eagles eh, wings. It's not to suppose that God came as a mighty eagle and lowered his hand and say, you all cannot board. <laughs> <laughs> and there were the boys eh, and then just took them away. No. Yet the Bible says he bought them on eagles eh, Wings. Later it says that it was the ministry of Moses and Aaron. God delivered Israel from the Egyptian bondage through the ministry of Aaron and Moses. These are the two wings of the mother eagle. The Lord God Almighty. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. But this capacity for ministry, which must derive from the knowledge of his will, was not full grown in Ezekiel. But it is sufficient that man knows something of his purpose. And God can use anyone that is available to him who has his characteristics. So, though not perfect, he had only four weeks, but God used him mightily. Amen. Amen. It's a type of the many persons who are present. They may not have been discussed and uh, uh, pointed to in scriptures, but they are there. For example, when Elijah said, ah, they have killed all your prophets and I'm the only one remaining and they want to kill me. Therefore, Father, kill me. <laughs> I mean, it is, but if you want to die, stay and wait for the people who want to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> but, but he was saying that God is not better than his father's he should go. But then, wait now. But the Lord says that if you're tired of ministry, go, no problem. Come to be with me. But anoint three persons to be in your state to fulfill the work that I gave you to do. Anoint this, anoint this, and anoint Elisha. Amen? Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. So, he now said to him, there is left to me 7,000 men that have not bowed the, the knees. So, so, as Elijah was to God, so was all those 7,000. And in the New Testament, we are told, there will be met in this hour a remnant. So, anything God wants to do, there are people on the earth he can speak to who can receive the ministry and proclaim it. Amen? Amen? Because of the power of the Holy Spirit, the ministry of the Holy Spirit, who is the principal partner. Let me read some scriptures. The, the capacity of those who stood in partnership with God in Old, the Old Testament that capacity is enhanced by the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So we are said to have six wings. Amen? Amen? And Isaiah 6 talks about that a little bit. We don't want to go into that. But let's look at John chapter 15.
the last two verses tell us of the mystery of the witness we bear by the Holy Spirit. It gives us a capacity beyond all of the Old Testament prophets. Amen? Amen. Because if you can hear from God, He can use you at any time. Amen. When a, such a mighty servant of God like Paul was to be uh, brought into the uh, into the, 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 the work of the ministry, God showed him the mystery and power of the local church. He did not send him to uh, people who were apostles before him mm -hmm. to lay hands upon him. He sent him to one of the many believers. What was his name? Ananias. Ananias. After that, you don't receive of him. The man had a standing ministry. He's not an apostle. He's not a great church. Then after, I say, hey, so this big thing is this person that did it. And that's why you see Paul praying for the churches to pray for him. Mm -hmm. Because he had an insight Insights. into this. For such a one, a great one, eh? in this world today, if somebody wants to start his ministry, you go and uh, he, will, he will apply many years for, for the uh, bishop of the college of, the, the president of the college of bishops in the United States to come to his village to come and anoint him. But when God wanted to has to be laid on his servant, he called another believer, just a believer, to lay hands upon him. That's the mystery of the God can use his Amen. church. And that is part of the thing that we say we'll discuss, discuss today. Keeping the charge of the of the Lord. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> indicates the prayer ministry of the local congregation. Mm -hmm. She must pray according to the will of God. Mm -hmm. She must know what the Lord is going to do at a particular time and unite to it. It doesn't have to be an event happening anywhere in the world. God has a problem. The Lord can say, speak it to them. Mm -hmm. Are you listening? Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen.